Today we're going to talk about a unit of measurement called the mole. And before we get there, uh, we're going to talk about a dozen. This tends to be how just about every uh, chem lecture kind of begins to talk about this. So we uh, pretty much everybody's you know pretty familiar with the idea of a dozen. You know, if I'm talking about flowers, for instance, one dozen would get me 12 flowers. So if I told you that I had, thank you, Flipboard, uh, three dozen flowers, and I want to know how many flowers that actually is, well, to do that, I would just need to convert. So it's a kind of implied that that's over one. If I need to end with flowers, then flowers needs to be on top. And I know that in one dozen, there are 12 flowers. So, and the thing with units though, is units work kind of just like numbers. If I have eight times one over eight, my eights cancel out, all right? So don't need to worry about that. So now I have three dozen times 12 flowers divided by one dozen. So my dozens cancel. So three times 12, I know that if I have three dozen, I have 36 flowers. Or if we wanted to go the other way, let's say that I had, oh, let's go, I had 48 flowers, or I want to order 48 flowers, but for whatever reason, the florist only understands dozens. I would need to convert the number of flowers into dozens to do so. If I wanted to end with dozens, I know dozens needs to be on top, and I already know that one dozen has 12 flowers in it. Flowers are really just a unit of measurement. It's just how many flowers there are. So flowers on top, canceled by flowers on the bottom. I'm left with dozens here. So 48 divided by 12. I could get out the calculator or you could take my word that that is four. The only unit I have left is dozen. All right, so now you may be wondering why am I talking about dozens and flowers and doing this kind of weird way to convert? Well, in chemistry, in order to talk about uh, essentially a group or a number of atoms, molecules, anything like that, uh, large enough that we can see and work with kind of at our level, we had to come up with a new descriptor. So what they came up with was the idea of the mole. So one mole it is spelt with an E, but whenever they use it as like a unit, they drop the E. Is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And I'm just going to put formula units here. Formula units can be anything from, let's make a list here. They can be particles. So quarks, stuff like that. They can be, you know, electrons. Uh, we will be talking about moles of electrons. They can be atoms of things. They could be molecules, like we could talk about moles of H2O in a glass of water. Uh, molecules. Kind of got lost there. Um, they could also be formula units. Typically, that's what we would call uh, like a base part, like an ionic compound. Uh, so all these things are, you know, fall under what I would say the umbrella of formula units. So one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. Now it could be anything I could have a mole of. I could have a mole of marbles. I could have a mole of people. That would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of it. So where does this become important? Let's say that I have, uh, not that line there. Uh, let's say that I have three moles of a substance and I want to know how many formula units is that? What if I had like three moles of helium atoms? How many atoms is that? Stuff like that. So the way I would go about it is I would go three moles. So I'm converting. Okay. If I'm starting with moles here, I'm going to have to put a mole down here just to make sure my moles top and bottom will cancel out. And then I would ask, well, how many are in a mole? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. I'm going to abbreviate a little bit there. 
Um, all right, so 6102 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. Uh, this is, you know, pretty much how we're doing it. Mole on top, mole on the bottom. I would just need to plug this into a calculator. Uh, if I get mine out here. All right, let me bring this over. So I have three times, and if you're wondering why I put 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd in parentheses, it's it's going to make some math easier, especially when dividing. Essentially, you just always put in parentheses, and you can't go wrong. Uh, 6.02 times 10 xy 23rd power, closing parentheses, equals, all right, so now... That is a big number. So let's go. I got 1.806. So now you're wondering, am I going to make you write all those numbers? The answer is no. And so we're going to use scientific notation for this. So there we go. So essentially, my goal is to get that decimal right where my mouse is right now. So to do that, I'm just going to count how many times I had to move my decimal over. Uh, so I go 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. 18, 21, 24. I had to move that 24 times. All right, so let me go click that. That doesn't help me. All right, so that was times 10 to the 24th power. Uh, most calculators, uh, and that once again is formula units. All right, so that's the answer. Um, typically, when you type it into a calculator, uh, they're not going to have room for all those zeros. Uh, they're going to give you something like 1.806, little e, 24. Actually, I don't think you'll ever see little e. Um, 1.806, like a little capital E, and then either positive 24 or just 24. Essentially, what that e means, e means 10. Like E, let's start over, E24 really means times 10 raised to the 24th power. That's really all that that E says. And that's like I said, that's what most calculators are going to tell you. Um, the Windows calculator is just a little funky like that. Uh, but yeah, so that's how we go from moles to formula units. Let's say, though, that I'm given 3.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And it doesn't even need, really matter what I have atoms of. The big thing though is I wanna know how many moles am I working with? All right, so in this case, I need to convert to moles. So let's start with what we know, 3.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Keep in mind, formula units can be atoms. Since I'm converting, I'm sure I'm gonna have something like that. In this case here, if I have atoms or formula units on top here, and no, I'm going to have atoms or formula units up down there. So that means my one mole is going to go on top. And 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. In this case, I'll write atoms instead of formula units. Goes on the bottom. Atoms on top, atoms on the bottom. Cancel, cancel. You know what? This is in scientific notation. Let's throw that in parentheses as well. So I have this times 1 divided by that. Or if I ignore the times of my one, I got 3.02 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. These parentheses become really, really important because if I just essentially typed into a calculator how I said, I'm going to get some number times 10 raised to like the 40 something. And that's definitely not what we're looking for. Uh, so if I bring my calculator back over, all right. So we got parentheses. Uh, 3.02 times 10 raised to the 23rd, closing parentheses, divided by opening parentheses, 6.02, 10, 23rd, closing parentheses, equals, all right, 0 0.5, that's good enough. Really, we're working with 0 0.5. Moles. I mean, if I had made that 3.01, that would have been like exactly half a mole. Here, it's close enough. Uh, so now you're wondering, well, how am I going to keep all this straight? Well, we're going to do a little bit of shortcut here. So let's say that I put formula units 
kind of in a box right there. All right. And I'm going to put moles right yonder. Okay. So I can go from formula units to moles, or I could go from moles to formula units. If I'm starting with formula units and need to get to moles, really what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my formula units times one mole over parentheses 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. Okay. So if I'm given formula units and they're asking for moles, I'm going to use this conversion right here. Whatever it is I'm looking for goes in front. If I'm given moles and I need to find formula units, the conversion I'm going to use for that, in this case I'm starting with moles, that means one mole will go on the bottom here. Parentheses 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. Closing parentheses. All right, we are actually going to add on to this here um, for the next uh, probably week or so. Uh, really, this is kind of our first starting steps into this whole idea of stoichiometry, uh, which gets to be really, really fun to say. Um, that's it for kind of going between formula units and moles. Next time we'll look at mass and moles. So have fun with the practice.